This VizCast deals with one-dimensional motion. Please pause the video and read through the question. As you have read, this question deals with a vehicle which accelerates from rest up to a particular velocity and then changes its acceleration to slow down until it stops. And you're asked to find two things about the motion. One is how much time does the total journey take? And secondly, how far? What's the distance that the vehicle travels over the complete journey? You're also told that this is actually a constant acceleration problem. So the car initially accelerates from rest at two meters per second squared, and then it uh, changes its acceleration to a different value and slows down until it stops. It's useful to break the journey into two parts. You know, treat the two parts with the two different accelerations separate. So let's draw a diagram to visualize that. So this dot represents my car, the red line represents the path the vehicle takes. Initially it was at rest and I'm going to take the initial position for the car as being zero. I know that the car has an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared and at this point the final velocity is 20 meters per second. What I don't know is how long that particular journey takes or how far that car has traveled yet. At this point in time and space the vehicle's motion changes, it begins to slow down. It slows down at a lower rate, its acceleration is now minus one meter per second squared, and then its final velocity is going to be zero as it comes to rest. I don't know how long that time takes, or how far the vehicle has traveled over that second path. But I want to consider these two paths independently if I can solve for those distances and times, I can add them together to find the answers for A and B. I do have a little bit more information here. At this point, for the second leg of my journey, whatever was my final velocity for the first leg is actually equal to my initial velocity for the second leg. And to make things a little bit simpler mathematically, I'm also going to take the second path's initial time to be zero, and I'm going to set this position here, initial position, to be zero as well. That way I can just add the two distances together. And once again, this is a constant acceleration problem, so let's recall uh, constant acceleration equations of motion. There they are. And then let's ask ourselves, how can we first of all solve for the total time that's elapsed? So the total time that's elapsed is going to be the red t plus the blue t here. Looking at these equations here, hopefully you see that the first one is actually a, a useful one because I know the initial velocities, the final velocities, and the acceleration, so I can use this equation to just solve for the time. So let's rearrange that equation to make t the subject. So, so t is equal to my final velocity minus my initial velocity divided by my acceleration. For path one, we can put some numbers in. So my final velocity is equal to 20 meters per second. My initial velocity was at rest, so it's zero, divided by my acceleration, which is two meters per second squared. And that gives me 20 divided by two is 10 seconds. I can also use the same equation for considering the time it takes for path two. So there, my time would be given by my final velocity. I'm at rest at the end of my journey over here, so that's zero, minus my initial velocity at the beginning of path two, which is the same as my final velocity at the end of path one, which is at 20 meters per second, divided by my acceleration. And now my acceleration is negative one meters per second squared. It's minus because it poses the velocity, it's slowing the vehicle down. And so that gives me 20 seconds, minus 20 divided by minus 1 is 20 seconds. So my total time from the start here to the stop over here is just the sum of these two. So 10 plus 20, which is 30 seconds. For part B, how far does the vehicle travel? We could use this equation, since we know the time now. Uh, we could use this equation here, or we could use this one here. So let's take the second equation. My final position minus my initial position, which is just my displacement, 
is equal to my initial velocity times time plus a half times my acceleration times time squared. For the red path, we know that my initial position is zero, my initial velocity is also zero, plus a half times my acceleration, which is two meters per second squared, multiplied by the time it takes for that journey, which we found was 10 seconds um, squared. So a half times two is equal to one, times uh, 100 is equal to 100, and that's gonna be in meters. We can look at the total distance of the second path, once again using the same expression here. So x minus the initial position, so I can set that to be zero, that's what I've done here. That way I'm just isolating path two, is equal to my initial velocity, in this case here my initial velocity is actually 20 meters per second, multiplied by the time it takes for that journey, which is also 20, we found that beforehand, plus a half times the acceleration. Now the acceleration is minus one meters per second squared, multiplied by that time, 20 seconds squared again. So 20 times 20 is 400, plus over here we've got 20 squared again, which is also 400, multiplied by a half is gonna be 200, multiplied by minus one is actually minus 200. So 400 minus 200 is equal to 200 meters. So the total distance that the vehicle travels is going to be 100 meters plus 200 meters, which is equal to 300 meters. Another way we can check this as well is graphically. So let's consider this motion again. If I draw a graph representing what I know in terms of the velocity and the time it takes for the journey. So I know my initial velocity is zero, so my, my vehicle journey is going to start here. So my graph starts in the bottom left hand corner here. And I have a constant acceleration, so we know that that means the slope is going to be a constant on this graph. In fact, the slope of my velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. So a slope of two means that I'm gonna go two up for one across, which looks like this. And at some time later, my velocity is 20 meters per second. The slope here is the acceleration, which is equal to two meters per second squared. That actually means I can read off the time pretty easily here, because in order to have a slope of two, that means that I've gone across one to go up two, or I'd have to go across 10 to go up 20. So this must be 10 seconds. It's taken 10 seconds for that journey. The second part of the journey, my acceleration is negative one. So my slope is gonna be negative, it's gonna go down, but it also goes down at a rate which is um, half that of my um, two meters per second here. So actually that's at an angle of about 45 degrees. So an acceleration of minus one graphically means that I go across one and I go down one. So that means if I'm going down 20, I must also be going across 20 as well. So, so the length of this base of this triangle here is 20, meaning the total time here must be 30 seconds. We found the total time. What about the total distance? Well, if you can recall, the area under the curve for a velocity versus time graph is equal to the displacement. All I need to do is calculate the area underneath this triangle here and the area underneath this triangle here. Let's have a look at that. Area of triangles are half times base times perpendicular height. So a half times the base here times 10 seconds multiplied by the height times 20 meters per second is the area of the first triangle. The area of the next triangle is a half times the base, which is now 20, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is also 20. Does this work out? A half times 20 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 meters. That's the first distance that we covered. And then we've got 20 squared times a half, uh, so that's 400 uh, times a half, which is 200 meters. My total distance now is 300 meters. That's what I cover.